Picking up where we left off, we've made our coffee mug, we've made something for it to sit on, and now we're going to focus on adding some color. Now, right now, let me just zoom extents here, and that will fit everything in quite nicely. Right now, everything is colored according to the colors that we put on the layers. Now that's not actually how we want to color these things. These colors are just temporary. All they do is they're used to tell us that anything that is red is on this layer. So that's the coffee. Anything that's gray is on this layer. Anything that's purple is on this layer. So it's just a color coding for what layer is it on. It's not meant to be decorative at all. So if we want to decorate it, if we want to make it look interesting, what we've got to do here is go up to the perspective window and we've got to change our viewport. So I'm going to switch from shaded mode to rendered mode. Now, rendered mode by default makes everything gray. Notice that my layer colors don't matter anymore. I also have this bright, bright, bright red background because, well, bright red background. Now, I want to change all of this because, first of all, it's really hard to look at this red background. I don't know about you, but that hurts my eyes. So what I'm gonna do is go up here. Now, if you're looking at these panels, you can resize these panels by dragging on this little margin right here. And I like having that kind of dragged out fairly large so I can read everything. I'm going to switch to this one right here. This is my rendering tab. I'm going to click on that and OK. So this tells me that I'm using the Rhino Render to make it look 3D and colored. Uh, I'm currently looking at the viewport here. Here is the size of my rend resolution. I can play around with all of this. Here is my backdrop and you can see right now it's red. I'm going to click on this right now so I can change it. And what that brings up is what's called the HSV color wheel. Here's a quick little lesson on HSV. HSV stands for hue, saturation, and value. Hue, think rainbow. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. Uh, by the way, indigo was made up by Sir Isaac Newton. It doesn't actually exist. And magenta. So magenta is kind of a transition color. It just lets us go around back in a circle to red. Now, saturation, let's go to an easier color to look at. Saturation is how much is the color saturated. So if you drop the saturation a bit, you get a paler and paler and paler color until you get almost white. Value is how much of the color shows and how much of it is light. So if you drop it down, it gets dimmer and dimmer and dimmer until it is black. And you can see we can also set the saturation and value by dragging around in the center right here. So here you can get millions of possible colors. So that's one thing, the HSV color wheel. There are other ways, luminance, CMYK for printing. You can take graphics and learn about those, but it's pretty easy to figure out how to get a decent color. Now, if you don't like one color, you can also choose a gradient color. With a gradient color, it blends between one color at the top and another color at the bottom. So you can see I've got blue at the top, and I can change that to, say, gold at the bottom, and I get a nice transition between the two colors. I'm going to stick to a 360 environment. And this, actually, an environment gives me extra lights to work with. So you can actually see that up at the top here, we have these windows. We have big windows that are lighting our scene. And that's not going to show up too much now, but it'll show up a little bit later. So I like using the environment here. Okay, next up. So that is the background. Now for the colors, 
I'm going to switch here to materials. I need to add some materials, kind of like if I bring out my box of 64 colors crayons. I need to pull out those crayons and I'm going to put them here. So to add materials, you can click on the plus sign and you can see we've got a bunch of different types of materials. Well, let's start with a simple one called paint. So I'm going to select a paint. Okay, so that comes up here. Got this little sample sphere showing up. And I'm going to call this under name, I'm going to call this mug color. Okay, so now I've got this paint called mug color. You don't have to name it, but Sometimes if you've got lots of colors, it's a good idea to name them. Uh, I'm going to choose a color from, again, here's my color wheel. I'll pick a nice blue color. So then what I can do is once I have my color, I can drag my color onto my mug and I can assign that color to my mug. And you can see right there, now my mug is blue. Now notice that it only colored in the mug. So I have to put a color onto every surface that I've created. So I'm going to drag that onto all the surfaces that I want. And there we go right there. Now, one of the things you can see, and this is why I like the studio environment, is if you notice that as I rotate it around, you get these different shades. Now what this is, is this is the light from the studio windows up here reflecting in my mug. You can actually see the shape of the windows reflected in the surface of the mug. And here is the other reflecting off of there. So you get some really nice reflections from this painted surface. Now another reason, and you can also see this looks like a smooth reflecting surface. Now where that comes from as well is what's called the glossiness of my color. I have a sliding scale for glossiness. So I have right now at 100%, which means it's very shiny. If I drag that down to about a half, you can see that my mug now looks a little duller. So I have more of a kind of a dull sheen to it. And if I drag that right down to matte, it's not reflective at all. So it's not reflecting those lights in that surface at all. All right, so now this is what the spheres are for because you notice that there was a, uh, actually let's finish off here. I'd like to make the coffee. So I'm going to pick a new material. Uh, this is a little tricky because of course there is no coffee in here. Um, so what you have to do is just kind of come up with something that looks okay. Uh, you can play around a few of these things. So let's try, uh, plaster. Now plaster is going to be just be a very dull matte color. So for just for now, I'm going to pick a brown and I'm going to drop the saturation a bit and make it kind of a darker brown. And okay. Drag that on there. All right. So that's just temporary for now. I might go back and change that a little bit later. Okay, so there is my coffee mug. Bring it out into the center here. So now I'm going to add some materials to my spheres. So the spheres are just to play around with different materials. Uh, I'm going to make one a gem. So I'll pick from the gem category. And what type do I want? Well, I could have amber, amethyst, aquamarine. Let's make sapphire. Sapphire is nice. Actually, sapphire is blue. Let's make ruby. Ruby is a nice red color. I'm going to drag that onto there. Now, interesting, it does not look red. It looks transparent, but it's not red. We'll see why in a bit. This is the same thing if you experiment and add a material. Let's say I add in glass. And... Uh, 
I'll drag that glass onto here. And again, it's transparent, but it sure doesn't look like glass. It looks more like a soap bubble. Some materials don't show up very well in the rendering engine right here. Other ones look pretty good. So let's try metal. And for color, let's try copper. I'll drag that onto here and I'll make that copper. Okay, that actually looks fairly coppery. And here also you can see the reflection of the two windows and there is the sun actually shining through one of the windows. You can see kind of a, that little reflection right there. Now, the other thing we want to do is, other than solid colors, actually, sorry, that's not the sun. That was my mistake. That is a spotlight because as I rotate it right here, you can actually see the spotlight is shining right there. So that's kind of hanging up in the middle of the room. And as you rotate it around, you can see all of the lights. This is why shiny surfaces reflect lights quite nicely. Now, before I get back to these two bits of glass, one other thing I'm going to try is this. Another place you can get materials from is the import from material library. Now, if I go here, it's going to open up a library of a whole bunch of different files. And you can see right here, these are all my different materials. So let's try uh, wood. And you can see here's a whole bunch of different types of wood. Uh, I'm going to choose oak. And I can choose a whole bunch of different types of oak. So I'm going to pick this one right here, oak red polished, and open that up. And I will drag that onto this surface right here. And now you can actually see that really looks like a slab of red oak. It's actually got a nice wood grain pattern to it. Now it's not proper because it doesn't have an end grain on it, but it looks pretty good. What this is, is this is literally somebody has drawn or painted a picture of an oak texture and we're kind of wrapping the surface up in that picture. Okay, so I've assigned all of my materials but I have one more step to do. This rendering right here, so the rendered view, this is about half as good as it could look. It's basically designed so that it gives you a reflection. The light reflects off the objects into the screen. But here's an example. Because this is metal, what's going to happen is, what sh or what should happen, is the light should reflect off of the metal onto this surface here. And because this is glass, I should see a reflection of the metal in the glass. But in order to do that, the computer has to do a lot more calculations. So this is just a first level reflection. If I want to see more reflections, I'm going to change to ray traced. Now, this is a bit laggy. You can see right now it's taking a little bit of time. Oh, look at that. Okay. That looks way more interesting. Now, notice the time. It's taking some time to get this done. This is because the computer has to do a lot more calculations to figure out how the light is moving around the scene. How So you can now see in my copper sphere, there's a reflection of the table or the, the wood in the copper. There's a reflection of the mug. You can see this is my glass sphere, and you can see how it's distorting the light that's going through. Here's my ruby. It's actually, the light is shining through and reflecting off of the surface. So it takes a lot more time to render something accurately than it does poorly or simply. And if I this shows up even more, if you rotate the scene around, you notice it's, it will lag, and then as soon as I stop rotating, 
There we go. Now it's starting to render the scene again. It's very grainy. It will fill in all the details slowly, but you can see this looks way more impressive. So usually what you want to do is position your objects. Just say, okay, I would like to see it looking like this. So let's rearrange everything. I'm going to move everything around. So I'll have this in the front and I'll move this up a little bit here. So usually you can just rearrange things and say, well, this is what I want it to look like. Position it the way you'd like the light to be showing off of it. And then you can check at what it looks like in ray traced. And again, it takes a few seconds for the computer to catch up. But once it does, you can see it gives you a much, much, much better view. I can turn my gumball off here and deselect my object. One last little thing here. You notice that my curves are still showing up here and I really don't want them to show up there. So I'm going to go here down to my display options. And right here under visibility, I'm going to say, please do not show curves. I'm going to uncheck that, click on OK, and now you see my curves have disappeared. I still have that dot there. I'm going to delete that dot. I don't need that anymore. So that is rendering. Now, there's one last rendering engine, and this actually works faster, but after you do this, you cannot take a picture. If you click on this blue marble right here, this is even a higher end rendering engine. It takes a few seconds to generate, but it will now take a snapshot of the scene. And it's doing what's called path tracing. And you can see a progress right here It's going through and just improving the picture every time it passes through. So you can kind of keep going until you're happy with that. I'll just pause this until it's done. Okay, so you can see we've gone through about 45, 46 passes. Now, to make this a little bit better, I could change the resolution. Uh, right now it's 72 dots per inch. If I increase that, it would look even finer. But I'd probably also want to be tweaking my graphics card. I don't think my graphics card is set up and uh, tweaked to the rendering engine just right now, but it looks pretty good. Okay. So that took three minutes, 23.51 seconds. And I could save the image if I'd like. Uh, if you save the image, it comes up as a JPEG or a bitmap file. I'm not going to save it. I'm going to do one more thing here. I'm going to switch back to rendered view because it will make my life a little easier. And what I'm going to do is put on what's called a decal. So a decal is like a picture. I would like to put that picture on my mug. Now, to do that, what I need to do is go to the, or first of all, I'll show you what happens, one thing. If I go to my Materials tab and click on the plus sign, Create New Material, I can choose a picture. Okay, so for pictures, let me take a look here. So 
So I'm going to take this picture right here because why not? And if I add that as a texture, now the problem is what it's going to want to do is it's going to want to wrap that all around my mug from top to bottom, back to front. And what I'm going to do here is just to show you, I will invert, hide, isolate this. So you can see now what it's done is it's taken that picture and it has wrapped it around the entire surface of my mug. And that is not really what I wanted to do. I would like to put it on like a picture. Let's switch back to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my mug. Oh, this is important to make sure to select it first. I'm going to go to the properties and choose decal. Okay, so I'm going to add a decal. And there is my picture right there. I'm going to open that file. Now, I have to decide how I want to put it on. Well, I would like it to be cylindrical because it's going to go on and wrap around like the outside of a cylinder. And click on OK. All right, so now I'm going to choose the base of my cylinder. So the base of my cylinder is this center point right here. Uh, the radius, I'm going to drag outwards. It's not really critical how far out we go. So about at the edge of my mug. And the direction, well, I need to go straight up. So I'm going to hold the shift key down and make sure I am pointing straight up. Doesn't seem to want to point straight up for me just yet. Let's see, there we go. I think that's pointing, actually that's a bit of an angle there. Let's try switching out views and there we go. I'm going to switch to the front viewport and I'm going to draw a cylinder right about there. And okay, so there is a cylinder now the last thing I need to do is decide how much of an angle I want it to spread around. So I'll start it right here and drag around and you can see I can spread it around. I'm going to turn off my object snaps now because they're kind of getting in the way. So I'm going to stretch it around until it's about the right size. It'll distort your picture quite a bit. So you can see it'll kind of squash it down. So you kind of have to do this a little bit. And there we go. There is my decal that I have put onto my mug. And if I go back up here, right click, bring everything back. There is a nice dentist's mug. My friend who's a dentist has this picture up in his office. He thinks it's funny. I'll switch to ray tracing. and you'll see, really see the distortion. Now, so you can see, sort of see in the glass sphere how distorted the picture is behind it. Okay, so we'll leave it at that. So you can decorate your mug any way you like. And just remember rendering, ray tracing, it does take time, so have a little patience.